Welcome to another installment of App Marketing Conversations. This is a special year-end installment. Uh, I'm Ian Sapperman of Mobile Dev HQ here with Roby Ganguly of Aptenib and Ryan Morell of Gamehouse. Uh, so we've been talking about sort of year-end wrap-ups, how things have changed in 2013. Wanted to talk a little bit about how things have changed in, in ASO, App Store Optimization, App Store SEO, uh, organic app marketing, all, all of that stuff. and, and uh, uh, in my head, it comes down to two big overarching things. One is, one is the world has woken up to ASO, uh, and the world has woken up to organic. It's not just a paid install world anymore. Uh, and then two is sort of how the platforms have changed over time, where where there has been innovation this year, where there hasn't been innovation, it's like that. So, um, so give me your your thirty second version of of what you guys have seen, especially on the organic retention side of the world around how marketers have woken up to that. Yeah, so I think there, there are two points. So one is marketers have woken up to the idea that not all channels are created equal. equal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Ew>. um, <laughs> very patriotic in the brain this way, apparently. No, but not all channels are, are created equal. So the clear conversation point is organic installs are the best. And so as people have woken up to that, they've spent a lot more time thinking about how to drive more organic. And the second is that when you have as busy a marketplace as you do, you look for places where you can just have a base of strength. And it seems like if you can understand exactly what people are looking for and how you map to that really well, that's where you can establish your base of strength because some of the old men in the app store are there because they have a base of strength and people are kind of viewing that. So a little bit more than 30 seconds. But that's good. Yeah, I mean, I think that this goes back to what we were talking about earlier. It's just so expensive to acquire users at this point, at least at scale, um, that it kind of forced people to get smart about acquiring users in other channels. And you know, as Roby mentioned, organic users have historically been the best for people. And so, you know, how are we going to get them? And um, I think it's a it's a really good natural progression of the market that has forced marketers to identify. We said at this point like what are people looking for how do i map to that yeah yeah it's, and going to get it. it's really interesting one of the one of the metrics that i track or at least i started to track this year was uh well so so before that like basically so we weren't the first person ever to use the phrase after optimization but we were one of the first right like there wasn't much going on there uh, and so there was nobody on LinkedIn. There was no jobs about about after optimization. And one of the one of the metrics that I watch is is how many jobs on on Indeed and how many people on LinkedIn include the phrase after optimization in their in their profiles. And like that number is actually like skyrocketing, right? I mean, it's not like huge. It's just like like there's like probably hundreds of thousands of people with SEO or search engine optimization, but there are thousands of things with with ASO, yeah. and that's really interesting right yeah uh, so it does it seems like people have have woken up to the importance of it have realized that like that is better quality users and that ultimately their success and, and their career will be will be defined by by being able to bring high quality users to your app and that's one of the things that they need yeah well I want, it'd be interesting to how many of those people came like says current app store optimization past SEO yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's actually right. great that's, uh, that would be great to see yeah yeah um, okay, so that's so. So one thing is just sort of noticing the importance of, of organic and, and ASO, and the other thing is is sort of seeing how the different platforms have innovated on this on this regard. Uh, this is something that I think Google Play has done a much better job of. Uh, but you think like I think off, off the camera you had talked about some of the things that Apple has actually done that might not be directly related to organic discovery, but are organic discovery or organic. Yeah, so I, I mean, I think the Roby had made a comment that he thought Apple was being complacent, which I disagreed with, and, and mostly because of the work they're doing around the hardware and just the ecosystem. Uh, we saw the release of, of iBeacon last week and their Apple stores and, and kind of the, the proprietary things that only Apple can do given their ownership of the entire stack. Um, where you walk into a store, you get a beacon that's going to guide you around to find the different things that you want or notify you when you get close to something or whatever it is. Um, and, and the opportunities that that creates, not only for developers, but for retailers and kind of people everywhere um, that, that can't be replicated in, in an Android world because of hardware limitations, right? Or at least in the very short, at least in the very two years or 
so. So, um, I mean, I, I think that Google is doing, I mean, they're clearly doing a much better job around discovery and getting people to down to, they're making better tools, right? Um, but it's also the same argument that I've had multiple times where developers complain, oh, discovery's broken, discovery's broken, discovery's broken. Well, really? Like, these are generating like billions of dollars a yeah. month. Like, are we sure it's broken? <laughs> like, who's it broken for? Consumers right. seem, yeah. seem okay to be able to find the games that they want. Sure. Um, so, you know, I don't know how it all plays out in the future, but I don't, I, w I wouldn't look at like platform uh, progress based just on how they manage their app store. Yep. And, and the, the pro Google Play argument that you're hearing from developers? Well, I think the developers are saying we're being listened to more and the management console has gotten an upgrade, being able to release betas has gotten an upgrade. The, um, ability to understand a lot more of the end-to-end -end analytics from from sort of download to retention. Some of that stuff has gotten much better in Google Play, the reporting and analytics for, for people. So in general, the tool sets have gotten upgraded, and as a result, people who develop for both platforms are starting to, I can tell, spend more time on the platform that they feel like is easiest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think that's pretty meaningful. I think, I think Microsoft taught us that if you make developers' lives easier, regardless of how people perceive the platform, developers will spend more time there. Yeah. yeah. And so my, my, my question, and we're kind of getting a little bit off topic, was does developer's time and attention on Android matter? Like, does it change the bottom line, which is we're still not seeing the, the discrepancy in revenue change, right? Sure. It's like, it's kind of still 25% or so. so yeah, it's a great point. <laughs> well, I mean, I, and we talked about this in my segment, like there's a lot in the market that isn't reported. Yeah, right. Sure. So if you look at advertising and in app purchases, app purchases, yeah. yes, yeah. Google Play 25% off. But if then you look beyond that, I'd be more curious about what are the retailers say, what are the travel sure. companies saying, what, what's Uber saying? Yeah. And, and if Uber saying it's 3366, that's still interesting, right? That it's higher than you know, some of the reported yeah. thresholds. So. Yeah. Well, that's a really good point because I think ultimately, maybe the message holistically of our <laughs> entire segment today is that there's more outside of games and there's more outside of just in-app purchase yeah. than yep. pan down than there's a whole economy here. Yep. All right. Uh, last thing before we break. If you're buying a new phone in 2014, what are you buying? Uh, well, I'm locked in. I'm, I'm locked in. Pretend you're not. Pretend I'm not. Um, I, there's a guy that I work with who has like a 12 inch Nokia phone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. I looked at it, it was like, my hands? <laughs> and I just want to use he it. He holds it with both. <laughs> yeah, he holds it with both. Uh, it's absurd. Uh, I would probably try the HTC one. No way. Or or the Sam. Or, you or are just Samsung. messing. You're you're buying you're buying an iPhone. Oh, of course I'm buying an iPhone. You said you asked me you said pretend I'm not. Well, oh, <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, so, so locked in meant I thought you meant contract locked. Locked in meant like you care about iPhone. Oh yeah, I care about. Okay, iPhone. all right, all right, all right, all right. Cool. So I just picked up a Nexus Five unlocked. It's pretty great. I would love to try out an iPhone 5S just for the um, you know, touch sensor. I think that that's pretty cool. And the more that's awesome. the more I look at people just around the world, like, you know, trying to tap in their passwords, the more like, that's pretty smart. So yeah. Yeah. I, I would like to live with that for a couple of weeks, although I suspect it would make me want it because I don't want to put in a password. <laughs> I think I would get the Nexus 5 as well. Really? Yep. Mm -hmm. That's pretty sure. It is. All right. Well, thanks for uh, thanks for watching, and be sure to watch the other segments. Like this video on YouTube. Subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you soon. Thanks. Thank you.